So the emphasis was on good and hope. Until it was rebranded about 15 years ago, the logo, the motto of the University of South Africa was Spes in Ardus, that's Latin. Mm -hmm. Hope in work. <laughs> so I'm very delighted that uh, Namibians are still committed to furthering their education through UNISA. It is a very old university, in fact the biggest university in Africa today. Don't you get surprised to find a university in South Africa that's bigger than a university in Nigeria? <laughs> yeah. South Africa has only 47 million people, yet caters for so many brains and heads and souls and spirits and physiques as they move forward to mortgage a better continent for our children and theirs. Nigeria has over 170 million people. So there is something that must be said about the African condition <coughs> and what education ought to do to lift us up from the morass of underdevelopment. When it was named the University of Hope, it was to uplift the people who found umbrage in Africa, who established their home and habitat in Africa, who established their future, as it were, in Africa. Where are we at as Africans today? I use the word Africans very advisedly because each and every one seated here in this room right now is an African. It doesn't matter how your ancestors got here. Even if they came in through the window or the manhole, it matters not anymore. And for Namibians, this is very critical. It's not a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen, that Namibia is at the moment the taught era of Pan-Africanism. The only country on the African continent that sings two anthems. Land of the brave and that of the African Union. The only African country on the African continent that hosts two flags. The Namibian flag and the African Union flag. Uh, that spirit of serving Africa is what UNISA represents right now. As an African university in the service of humanity. Therefore, it is incumbent upon us today, 2018, to embrace education. Now, what UNISA has been quarreling with, as it were, agitated about, is to the extent to which we as African scholars can contest the old canons of truth that were bequeathed unto us by those who wrote about us without loving us. Those who wrote about us as the problem unto ourselves. Those who wrote about us as people without knowledge, without an idea. You find Africans in the museum in France in La Louvre, in the Department of Anthropology, but not in the world of ideas. UNISA is saying, let's contest that. Let's be part of ideas. It's only fair that we become instrumental agents and agencies of history to manufacture, as it were, our own knowledge, to produce our own knowledge, to disseminate our own knowledge, and to metacritically examine our own knowledge. So that in the end, we as Africans, regardless of the shape of our noses and hair length, <laughs> can be proud of what we have produced in the world today. Don't believe Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't know us. We must tell him who we are. Now here is what UNISA represents today. There is a story of an Italian coach somewhere in Minnesota, that's in the Midwest of the United States. 
you know that basketball, this man was a coach of basketball, you know that basketball is routinely a sport of very tall and big black boys. You know, every now and then you find a, 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 a white boy who belongs. But routinely, it's a black boy sport. <clears throat> this Italian coach was coaching black boys. But two of the coach, the, the, the players, were uh, in possession of names like Marco and Francisco. That tells you that they were probably of Italian descent. So the boys would notice that their coach was spending more time with Marco and Francisco. So the black boys were a bit alarmed by that over expenditure of time on only two. So they went to the coach and said, Mr. Coach, why do you spend more time with our friends than the majority of us? Is it because they are Italian? And he says, well, that's a good question. No, I don't spend time with them because they are Italian. I spend more time with them because I am Italian. So don't take your cue from what other people call you. It's what you call yourself that matters. We are Africans. The future belongs to us. Now when you as scholars and intellectuals engage in the production of knowledge, dissemination of knowledge, examination of knowledge, and fact, counterfactual, the, 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 the knowledge that you have, place yourself squarely, anthropologically, historically, sociologically, mentally, economically, and physically on the African continent. Because our problems are African in nature, the African in content, the African in character, and indeed African in their solution. We need to find African solutions to our own problems. If Africa is the cradle of humankind, it's now an undisputed fact that human life began in Africa, then why are we not in the forefront of producing knowledge that goes with human civilization. There is a disease and dis-ease that's growing in Namibia, and that's the hate of intellectuals. We don't cherish intellectuals in Africa. That's why in our systems across the continent we have people in power who have no ideas, and people with ideas not in power. And we don't bring the connection together. Therefore, we remain in the game and habit and practice and, and custom of playing up, of playing the catch up game. We all borrow from other people. Ali Mazrui, one of the most seminal scholars that Africa has produced from Mombasa, Kenya, wrote before he died that we in Africa have a habit of borrowing unintelligently from other people. We borrow the habit of ostentation. You see our leaders across the continent in motorcades, but when one of the cars breaks down, no one knows how to fix it. We call in people from outside. We borrow the culture of pomp and circumstance, showing off, but not the culture of production. We borrow the culture of shopping and buying, but not the culture of retail and manufacturing. He ends by saying, we borrowed even the culture of wearing the most expensive wristwatch, but not the culture of watching the watch to be punctual. <laughs> I 
I'm glad that we are still part of UNISA because it is a mother university, a mother university not only for us in Namibia, but 90% of the universities that you have today in South Africa were given birth to by the University of South Africa, except perhaps Rao, now UJ, Stellenbosch, Free State, uh, and one other that were interested in counterpositional hegemony of Africana power. I'm not going to bother that now. But for us in Namibia and in Africa, <coughs> education is very, very important. I'm so humbled to see that most of you, I know some of the faces are very senior citizens, senior in terms of your roles, not age, <laughs> that you are still pursuing education. Education is not only the key, as our leaders say, and they don't apply it. It lifts you up. It gives you a self-understanding, a self-definition, a self-affirmation, and self-direction that no one else can give you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the world was God. So, fellow Namibian, fellow African, define yourself in a manner that you wish to be defined. It's time for us in Africa to serve humanity. It's time for us in Africa to begin with ourselves. As they say in West Africa, until lions have their own historians, all stories about hunting will glorify the hunter. They also say, if you do not know where you come from, you will not know where you are going. In fact, if you do not know where you are going, any road will take you there. As a matter of fact, you will not even know that you arrived. Never mind that even departed in the first place. You wander in, wander by, wander off. Who are we? Use education to direct our affairs in Africa. Use education to rename us more pleasantly, more affirmingly, not in the manner that others describe us. As a pathology, the abnormal. I have a friend in Uganda, a very, very serious Africanist by the name of Lutu, L-U-U-T-U, you can Google him. And he talked at UNISA uh, seven years ago, and he floored us all. Uh, his depth of Africanity, if you will. That invitation that we should redefine ourselves, regroup, re-identify ourselves in relation to one another and how we can take our countries forward together, not against each other. He says, if it is true, then we affirm that to be true, that Africa is the mother of humanity, the cradle of humankind. Then, Luto argues, that admission, that acceptance, that affirmation, that recognition of Africa has consequences. That means we, as African people, have the longest experience being human. We have been human the longest. Therefore, we have an obligation and a duty to teach other people how to be human. <laughs>